Okay, everyone. So, story with Darlington. Um, we ran the race, and we're not going to sugarcoat it, guys. It was horrible. The, there was no good racing. Ryan Blaney led every lap but one, which Boyer led because he was on pole. There was no crashes. There was no exciting racing. They single filed out immediately. And this is just how it simulates 2003 Darlington. So we won't show this race to you guys, but we will tell you kind of a rundown. So Blaney led them all. Um, Johnson had a decent car. There was one small incident at the very end where Keselowski got loose and clipped the wall with Elliott. But this race is not going to be a huge point shakeup because it was just a very predictable race. There was nothing exciting. And we don't want to make you guys watch 20 plus minutes of that. So we're just going to go on to Bristol, which is going to be a great race. And yeah. Let's go, guys. This is going to be fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. We're coming off of a really dry race at Darlington. We had the explanation at the very start of this video. So we are going to be here um, using a um, Bristol track, a newer version. So it's going to be a really exciting race. It's going to be tempers flaring, 50 laps around the high bank Bristol. Let's get it going. Got Harvick and Boyer on the front row, two Haas teammates. So you come to so green. We got Tyler Reddick on row number two with William Byron, and we are green. Kevin Harvick gets the good jump, and the rest of the field rolls on. Two by two they go, going down now into turn number three. Clint Boyer is your leader. And his Ford Ooh. teammate comes up behind him as a huge moment there as William Byron almost gets into that four car. Truex tries to follow these guys through. Oh. As they're three wide behind them. Nine car with a wow, huge They're one. able to avoid contact there. Ooh, man, some really dicey racing two by two. They have not strung out yet. Forty-eight car running in fifteenth, trying to make up a little bit of ground. Three car looking low on his brother there. Now oh yeah, it looks like the outside lane is a little bit favored over the inside here. The thirty-two goes way up the track. Can he get a run off? Yes. Man, Barry Hill is having a great day. He's running up in the top 13, which is really, really cool for him. He does not usually have races like this. We look back up at our leader, Clint Boyer. As he's got a, probably a half second gap over Kevin Harvick in second. Three car lengths, maybe. And William Byron is all over Harvick's bumper. Now, of course, lap traffic is a huge factor here at Bristol. And we're probably going to have hit it before lap 20. So be ready for that, because that is tough for the leaders to manage. 24 all over the back bumper of that four car. 24 trying to make a move from the four car. I just don't know if he can, you know, get under him here. I don't know if he can either. The four car is trying to gain some ground up in front of him. Huge pack right here. Yeah, love's gonna look low. Nothing there. Levin tries to look low on the 19 car. The 12's trying to follow suit. Ooh, that Brad Kislowski's gonna get almost under that 12 car. Ooh, 12 moving the 11 off the track? No, not yet. Got Ooh, he's contact. trying to get that bump and run to work there but also doesn't want to get him too loose or it could cause himself some problems. Big moment there for Blaney. And they are so under a blanket here at Bristol. We just went through a little smoke there, which means there was a small incident probably with some of the back markers. Don't see any lap traffic yet. No, no lap traffic in sight just yet. The 11's kind of we'll running, kind of running a bit more middle than they used to be. 
See them there on the PJ one. Turn one, they kind of slide up to middle. Yes, they do. We are still on board with Ryan Blaney as he tries to cut through this 11 car. Brad Keselowski is all over him as well. Man, really tight bumper to bumper racing here at Bristol. Ooh, got close there between the 12 and the 11. There goes the 12. The 12 pushes that 11 up the track and goes right. Oh, he can't get by him though, because here comes the two on his outside. Two car trying to work up, up high. And it's gonna work for him. He's got the run. Wow. Wow, he's gonna zoom by both of those guys. The high lane is looking good when it comes to passing, and now he tries to go to the bottom on the 19 car. Doesn't quite prevail. Twelve car on the bumper of the 11 hard right there. Oh yeah, leaning on him. Two cars gonna have to work up high to keep making up those spots. As you saw there, the high lane can work. Oh yeah, the high lane works really good. I really don't know why these guys aren't running more of the high lane than they are the bottom. That might Ooh, be. we're in light traffic. Oh. Huge pack there in front of the 14, double zero, 33, seven car. They're all there. Nowhere to go for Boyer. Oh, Harvick the 33? Is now all over it. Oh, this could end up bad. <laughs> yes, it could. Oh! Boyer does not want to cause a wreck here because he's going to be involved if there's a wreck. This is really bad right now because they are in a huge pack, some fast, some slow. Oh, yeah, it's going to bunch up this field for sure. Could bunch it up even more if a caution comes out because of it. Oh, yeah, well, this is about as bunched up as it's going to get. Keselowski is all over them now. Everyone's caught the leader as the leader is in lap traffic, and the 26 got really close with the 7. Oh, the 24's going around the outside with the 19. New leader, 24. He's going to get the run off. He definitely has the run right now. And he has nobody in front of him. He's got clean track. 24 car. To the lead. So we're still... Everyone trying Man, to find a way. The going to start to get impatient here. Oh, got really close there. Oh, I see a wreck coming here. Three wide. This cannot work for long. Eleven's going to make it work. As the two lap cars of Earnhardt and the Seven are just double teaming the lanes. Trying to keep the leaders from going by. Man. This is definitely not what Clint Boyer needed. The 24 car is checked out over Boyer, as these two packs just keep on being blocked by the lap traffic. They'll eventually get tired of it. Oh yeah. Eventually bumpers, push is gonna come to shove, and I, I can see that 33 going around fairly soon, knowing how Clint Boyer is. And look how many cars are in this pack now. The double zero still holding up the 24. Oh, no. Not again. The double zero is parking in front of that 24 car. Has he not learned anything since Atlanta? The double zero might keep it up because of the high side runs. Yes, he does. Double He's zero is going to cost the 24, 24 lead. He gives the lead to the 19. Man, the 24's got to be furious. These two already don't like each other, and this is not helping one bit. No, it is not. The double zero is just parking in front of the 24 and letting the other leaders go by. Oh, the 24 sends him up the track. He's going to try to take him out. Oh, the double oh, zero. So very close. Won't move out of the way. Oh, the double zero is just torturing William Byron. Just won't move. This is this is just horrible. You never want to see this if you're William Byron. He needs to take out that double zero car. 
He just can't. Oh my do gosh, that. the double zero is doing everything in his power to not let that 24 buy. Double zero is not happening with the 24 already. No, after getting flipped at Atlanta, the 24 finally gets his nose under him, but the double zero is going to run that high lane and be able to stay in front of him. High lane's better than what these drivers are thinking. I don't really know why they're staying on the bottom. The high lane's obviously showing more speed. 24 just needs oh, to- Oh, Byron gets loose right there. He is getting so aggressive trying to find some way by this double zero car. Wouldn't be surprised if the 24 resor resorts to the bumper again. Man, you know how furious Byron has to be. Oh, the 95 just came off of pit road. He must have had some trouble earlier in this race. 24 just can't do anything with the double zero. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man. If the 24 super Superman and the double zero is kryptonite, he cannot do anything with him. He keeps trying to get some runs, but he just cannot do it. Let's check back up with our leaders. We'll come back to this battle in a bit. Truex still up front coming onto some huge lap traffic. This We have seen lap traffic play a huge role in this race. And, oh yeah, the 11's now... The 19's now under fire from this 11 car. He gets to run off the top. But now, lap traffic. Hot and heavy. Lap traffic in front of him. T both the top three cars right now are dealing with heavy lap traffic. Oh, if the lap traffic goes two by two in front of him, that's going to go horribly for both Truex and Hamlin. How much do you think Byron's still dealing with the double zero? Yep. Oh, yeah. Byron cannot do anything with that double zero. Let's check back in with the 14, see if he's finally freed himself. Oh my god, poor pitiful Clint Boyer. He's back in 17th. That is horrible, going from leading the race to just get stuck behind lap traffic and now can't do anything. Ooh, contact there. See, the, the two cars caught these guys right here. Maybe the two car can help Byron do something with that double zero. After this race, no one's going to have any nice things to say about any of these back markers. There, there, there's a rivalry brewing between Quinn Half and William Byron. Quinn, have you ever heard that sentence? No, that is insane, but there is a true rivalry building between these guys. The battle for the lead is still the 19 and the 11 car. The 11's got that high lane, which is preferred, but the double zero is actually catching the leaders. Oh, is the double zero just waiting for the 24? 24 is going to fall back beneath the 95 now. And the two's following suit. The 95 just got by all of them. 24 up high. This, this is where he finally gets it done. He's finally passed the double zero of Quinn Howe. Took him long after enough. After probably 20 laps. Now it's Brad's problem. And we all know it's going to be a huge problem. Quinn Howe is never easy to deal with. William Byron's trying to battle for the lead now. Three-way fight for the lead as the leader is picked behind lap traffic. Can the 11 car get the bottom lane secured to get the lead? No, he cannot. The 24 is now battling out on the outside. And the double zero is following him through. This is insane. The 24 car is now your leader, taking his good buddy Quinn Health with him. Can Quinn Health run down William Byron and take him out of the lead? He's sure gonna try. Health. Still, he's a lap down, but. And he's trying to find some way to pester William Byron as William Byron catches up to more lap traffic. 43 car holding up the 11. 
we're seeing these guys use their bumper a lot, but yet we have still stayed caution. Oh, 43 but in the wall. 43 just hit the wall. Definitely not good for the 19 who's picked behind him. So the high lane's still preferred. Well, yeah, the high lane is still working better for these guys. The 19 car now using that high lane's gained some spots trying to catch back up to William Byron. So he's the Can he get by Quinn Half, though? Quinn Half is just a pain to deal with. Now, Quinn Half, without realizing it, is actually helping his good buddy, William Byron, get away. Byron's still got lap traffic to deal with, though. Oh, yeah, big time lap traffic for William Byron. But he's taking the white flag right here. White flag is out. Being held up by lap traffic, but so is his competition. William Byron is actually going to win at Bristol unless something happens here. William Byron comes off turn four to take the win at Bristol. Brad Keselowski comes in second. Huge win for William Byron. 